Welcome to How to Talk to Kids About Anything with Dr. Robin Silverman, a podcast loaded with practical tips, powerful scripts, personal stories, and simple steps to make even the toughest conversations easier. So get ready to get the information you need to make the impact you want from someone you trust, your friend, parenting expert, Dr. Robin Silverman. Hello and welcome to How to Talk to Kids About Anything, where we give you the tips, scripts, stories, and steps to make even the toughest conversations easier. I'm so honored to be your host, Dr. Robin Silverman, child and teen development specialist, author, and speaker, and most importantly, parent of two great kids who give me the opportunity to love, learn, and grow every single day, whether I want to or not. Believe me, I get it. It's not always easy, but we're in this together, and we have some great people helping us along the way. Now, how do we keep going, hammering away at our dreams when we find ourselves faced with disappointment, frustration, failure, and a big fat no from those who help to make dreams happen? It comes down to perseverance. Perseverance, persistence, determination, and grit. We keep on going because there's a fire in us that tells us we must try yet another time. How does this play out in real life? Just today, one of my very best friends posted a video of her daughter playing a song on the piano. A year ago, this girl had committed to learning Piano Man by Billy Joel, a really challenging goal for anyone and especially for a then nine-year-old. She was adamant about doing it and she persevered. She hit bumps in the road, valleys on tough days, fumbling fingers, wrong notes, but she kept on going. And today, she debuted the song. And it was delightful. A full year of dedication to a goal from this child. That's a huge part of her life. Nine years old, ten years old now. But she will always know that when she sticks to something, when she sets a goal, when she perseveres, She can make what seems monumentally challenging an actual achieved reality. So today we're going to talk to someone who also made her goal a reality. Despite facing frustration, failure, disapproval, she too persevered. And so we're going to devote today's special podcast to how she reached down deep to keep going and what words of advice she has for our kids who must learn how to do this as well in their own way, of course. How do we help kids find their passion? And how do we help them go after it when they find it, despite the fact that success doesn't happen in a straight line? Jody Norgard is the creator of the award-winning Go Go Sports Girls line of dolls and books for girls encouraging healthy and active play over fashion and body image. Jody is a consultant, activist, and keynote speaker, inspiring and empowering women and girls throughout the world. She has been featured on national media, including the Today Show, Forbes, and Upworthy. In 2016, Jody was invited to the Obama Arab White House to participate in conferences on breaking down gender stereotypes in media and toys. The Go Go Sports Dolls brand was recently acquired by Jazzwares, an established cutting edge toy company. So welcome, Jody, to How to Talk to Kids About Anything. Thanks for having me, and what a nice introduction. I'm Happy ex- to be here. I'm excited you're here. This is going to be great, and I think it's just really interesting to take somebody who has gone through it and really try to extrapolate what it took to get there. We've got a lot of great people listening. We've got parents, teachers, coaches who deal with frustration and failure every day in kids. But before we get into the bulk of the interview, can you tell us first what gets you up in the morning and what got you so interested in following this passion of designing and merchandising go-go sports dolls in a market that frankly is saturated with fashion dolls and in a society that seems to say that's really what they want. They're focusing on looks and thinness and makeup and sex. So what made you go in this opposite direction and keep going in that direction? Very good question. So just to go back a little bit. Mm-hmm. So when when I was younger, right, like 
I, I, I had one sister and, you know, a very, you know, strong mom and strong aunts and, you know, great family uh, dynamics. But I, I always saw these gender stereotypes, like gender issues um, that I experienced personally. But, you know, this while I was going through that, I, uh, you know, and growing up and, you know, going into college, I didn't realize um you know, how this, you know, my experiences would lead me down my path, right? Mm. So these gender issues and these gender stereotypes were on my radar for years, for decades, but I didn't know what to do about it. So I pushed it aside. And I think we all do that, uh, you know, with different situations in our lives. But what really opened my eyes were my three children. So, and when I had, I have two boys and a girl and my daughter is in the middle. And when she was nine years old, it was an aha moment. So it's basically, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back. Like all these gender issues are on my radar. But again, I, I, I'm just like so confused. And, you know, a lot of times we go through life thinking like, well, this is just the way it is, right? Because it's so ingrained in our culture. But... I had an aha moment and it was in the toy store. Mm. So my daughter and I, so it, honestly, parents out there will probably be very familiar with this scene because I am literally running into the toy store with my daughter by hand because she needs a wrapped birthday gift for a party mm -hmm. she's attending in 30 minutes, mm -hmm. right? So we've all been there, right? So she, she's nine and she's in her soccer uniform because she had just gotten done with soccer practice. So she's looking cute and like a normal kid on a Saturday afternoon with rosy cheeks and, you know, her hair is in crazy, messy pigtails. And I'm pulling her into the toy store. I'm like, Gracie, I'm like, we need to find this gift <laughs> fast when a line of dolls just stopped me in my tracks. I'll never forget it. It was like I, I literally just stopped and looked hmm. and I'm like. I pick up the dolls and I look at, I start looking at them and they all had on short skirts, crop top, belly button ring, mm -hmm. big hair, lots of makeup. I look at my cute little daughter. I look at these dolls and I pick up the doll. One of these dolls and the name on the hang tag was lovely Lola. Mm -hmm. And at that moment I knew there wasn't one parent out there that wanted their daughter to look act or be called lovely Lola. Mm -hmm. So I started picking up the other dolls in the line and they were like named Dazzling De Destiny mm. and Sizzling Sue. Ooh. And I know. It's right? like a line I'm of like, strippers. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's exact. I'm like, no way. You know, my daughter is so smart and spunky and fun. And, 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 and you know what? I, I just don't want her to think all of a sudden whoa, I, I got to look like this if I'm going to be a cool girl, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, this is not just about my daughter. It's about every little girl out there. So I actually bought the doll to, as I'm scolding all the salespeople, you know, saying, you know, oh, this God. is crazy. And, you know, I'm like, you shouldn't be marketing sex to girls. And they're like, you know, lady, we're 16. I'm like, hey, yeah, I get it. Right? <laughs> I didn't design it. I don't know. I know. They're like, just buy the doll. And, you know, it was so funny because my daughter, I'll never forget. She's like running behind me. And I'm literally having like a temper tantrum in this toy store. And so she's running behind me. She's like, mom, mom, is that the birthday gift for Maddie? I'm like, no, I'm buying it to show dad. I need <laughs> like, to what? show dad. And she's like so confused now. Like, why are you buying this creepy doll to show dad? Mm -hmm. So anyway, I did. I brought it home and I showed my husband and I said, hey, listen, I think I, you know, well, first of all, I said, you know, I'm sick and tired of the negative images that are marketed to girls. I think I can do something about it and create a positive image product for girls that encourages them to be healthy physically, mentally, and emotionally through sports and physical activity. And that started the Go Go Sports Girls. Mm. So interesting. And I think it's amazing that that moment can cause, you know, just a full line of of dolls it can create you know so much momentum over the years that came after it so i'd love to talk about those sort of small moments that you you know make such a big impact so first 
you talk about that in your presentation, like how small moments create a huge impact. So first, what does that really mean to you? And second, how can we help our kids capitalize on these small moments and allow them those small moments, these epiphanies, these aha moments, and take them seriously and and allow them to become something big? Right. I did. I feel like, you know, I, I do talk about these small moments that have a, a, a big impact. And a lot of times I speak about, you know, like how things are marketed to our, our children, mm-hmm. you know, um, at the age of nine, seven, eight and nine, you start to see this discrepancy in toys that are marketed to kids. Uh, for boys, you start to see violence and aggression. Mm. And for girls, you start to see products marketed with uh, associated with appearance and attractiveness. Now, these are small moments, right? Mm. These are just like, you know, uh, you know, little small paper cuts that you know, build over time and cause damage, right? So that's like the negative, Mm -hmm. but there are certainly positive small moments that can have a a big impact. So uh, taking advantage of opportunities, um, you know, for, for instance, for me, I took advantage of an opportunity to meet with Walmart buyers Mm. that, Literally, I had five minutes and every single person I knew in the toy industry told me not to do it because Walmart would eat you up and spit you out. And Mm, mm. I was like, well, I'm going to take advantage of this small opportunity. Well, it had a huge impact because Mm. Walmart was amazing to 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 work with. So sometimes like recognizing those small opportunities and making sure you take advantage of it, Mm. it just keeps moving you forward. Mm -hmm. Um, And then not allowing this sort of doubt and other people's naysaying to -hmm. define what it is that you do, because you clearly had something in your gut telling you let's let's try this and really what is the harm in trying this five minute meeting with walmart what is the harm so what is the harm for a child to say you know what i am going to try out for the play and take that five minutes to sing that song up on stage or Mm -hmm. you know that um, i am going to get rated for for baseball even though you know i don't know that my hitting is good enough or or whatever or or band or any other activity you know that they're going to try out for the team because it may be a small moment but even if it doesn't result in what you want it shows you that you can do it exactly and it gives it gives you confidence it gives you courage because we we actually you know and i think most of us realize this but the actual anticipation of a mm. fear is greater than the fear itself mm-hmm. right so for like for your example that you know child who wants to try out for baseball who is so scared right mm-hmm. and that actually does it you know i mean that that, that their 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 confidence just grows so much so you know it went as a parent too and and you understand this i mean when you when your child has fear as a parent you feel it in your gut mm-hmm. there's some weird connection like you just hate for your child to feel any sort of pain or you know you don't want them to fail but it's just so you know my children are older now but you know every single you know thing that they tried and that they did and they pushed themselves just made it easier for that next step, that bigger step to move forward. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, I agree with that. And it, it really seems like your journey can help us kind of piece together how we can help our kids on their journey. I know that you underscore that your persistence and your determination was fueled by passion. Mm -hmm. So how do we help our children recognize their passion? I mean, this could have been, your experience could have been anything. You could have seen anything in that toy store. You could have noticed anything on the road. You could have been in a, a, a dog shelter and noticed something that you didn't like. But this was the thing. This was, became your passion. You know, and especially when, 
looking at your passion looks like an uphill climb. You know, that's going to take a lot of time to achieve. Nobody's ever done it before. So how do we help our kids recognize that passion and go for it, especially when it looks like it's going to be a tough climb? Right, right. I've had a lot of people ask me the question, um, like, how how do we, you know, you know, instill grit in our kids? Right, right. Right? Like, they, you know, a lot of people think I've always been super gritty or super determined or, you know, super passionate. And I haven't, you Mm -hmm. know, I mean, literally, Mm -hmm. I remember, I mean, this is just an example of, of, of like the determination I didn't have when I was a kid. Um, I was, I, you know, I'm, I'm very even keel. Like I don't have a whole lot of highs or super lows, you know, it's always pretty, I'm pretty even. And when I was younger, I remember I was, I was, uh, I played a lot of tennis and I was playing this one young girl and she, I'm beating her. Right. And she starts crying. Mm. And then, and so my dad is watching and, and I look at him and, you know, he's just sitting there and I totally throw the game. I let her win. And my dad said to me, he was out of his mind. And he's like, (laughs) why did you just let her win? He's like, you totally threw that game. And I said, dad, she obviously couldn't handle losing and I can. And he's like, I mean, he was just like banging his head against the fence. Like, are you kidding me? You know, so I mean, literally, I had the game in my hand, but I was just like, yeah, you know what? I am fine losing. And she's obviously not fine losing. Mm -hmm. So it was a good lesson for me. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, I wasn't always like super determined. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in, you know, so if you see your child, like I I look back at my, my boys, my daughter was more determined than my boys. They were kind of like, you know, uh, you know, loosey goosey, like if they had to get a a B in a class, you know, and they needed to get an 80% on a, a, on a test, they were always successful in getting that 80%. I'm like, why don't you shoot for that 90? You know, I'm like, how do you do that? How do you consistently get what you're supposed to get? You know, let's shoot for higher. And, you know, but, but that being said, you know, once I like this flame in me with this passion of, you know, letting girls rise to their full potential and not, you know, I, I kind of referred to it as that, like, I see it as like a, do you, do you remember that whack-a-mole game? Where, yes. you know, they, right. And I kind of like felt that that's what happens to women and girls at time. We start to rise and then we're just knocked down mm. and I was sick of it. And I knew I was a hundred percent right. Mm. And if I, if mm. somebody ever challenges me, I always ask, what's the downside? Tell me your version what is the downside because i really want to know Mm. so i felt that i was a hundred percent right and there was nothing nobody was going to change my opinion and my thought and i was moving forward Mm -hmm. so you know when it comes to a child's passion i say let them let them you know really you know, you know, venture out and explore. And, you know, it, it, I, I kind of look at it like, um, and I've told my kids this, say, say your child likes music, right? You put music in the center of the circle. Now, you, you, there are so many different arms that can come out of that circle that have to do with music, right? So there's so many different avenues that a child can take. So, or a person can take. Um, so I kind of view it uh, that way if I mm-hmm. if I if I've explained that well enough. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when somebody is passionate about something when you find that a child is passionate about it how do you advise them from your experience that doing something that nobody has ever done before yes it takes a lot of effort and you're forging your own path but it's worth it it is i mean you know it's it's never easy Mm -hmm. to you know on a path to success, right? It takes a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. So I do remember when I was younger, my goal was, you know, I was going to be on the pro tennis tour, right? That was when I was about nine years old. 
And then, you know, it went to, well, I guess I'm not, you know, now I'm getting beat a lot, right? So now, you know, but I still love, te- you know, tennis. So, you know, it's, it, I, 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 w- I continued down that path. I was a high school tennis player. I wasn't good enough to play in college. However, I mean, I'm just giving you my path mm-hmm. because it's interesting how I've always been very interested in sports, mm-hmm. right? My mm-hmm. entire life, I, I, I run, I, to this day, you know, it's my meditation. So it, it, so I, you know, I, you know, went to college, I've always worked out, you know, I've always found it uh, to, to help me mentally uh, as well as physically. And then I ended up with a product so that is a sports yeah. doll, yes. right? right? So I see that how sports and physical activity benefit not just girls, but boys, mm-hmm. right? So girls play sports and so should their dolls, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. if you ask me, I bet if you put a thousand women uh, on a wall and you said, okay, I want everybody in a line. I want everybody to tell me, their top three things. Those women, the majority of them, I'm betting, are not going to say fashion. Mm-hmm. Fashion is my top three things. Mm-hmm. I would say, you know, it's, you know, we're, we're, we're all, we have interests that are just, you know, it, it goes the gamut. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So why do we continue to pigeonhole girls at an age where we say, hey, you've got to, you know, you know, uh, look a certain way and mm-hmm. it's all about fashion and oh, drives me crazy. Oh, I love the idea though, that, you know, your passion can take a lot of different routes and just to be open to that, that, you know, if you're, if you're interested in sports, it can come out in, in how you, um, run your life and, and what you're going to do to get that love of sports out to the world. You know, it's not something that's just personal, but they can use it in all these different ways. I know with, um, when I was little, my, if if somebody was to ask my mother what I was going to be when I grew up, she would say I was going to be a performing doctor, which everybody Mm -hmm. laughed about because I loved singing and acting. And then I also loved working with children and always said I was going to be a doctor. And, and who, who would have known that I actually became a performing doctor? Um, <laughs> right. I mean, like, I mean, in my own you know, <laughs> speaking and, you know, going on, on TV and, and that kind of thing. Um, you know, so sometimes the, the path that looks sort of absurd um, actually becomes the thing that you do. And I think that we have to really listen to kids and, and help them to to listen to their passion, but understand that what has happened all around them, what people have done with their type of passion in the past may not necessarily be where they go with it. You know, just to be open to so many different paths, as Mm -hmm. you were talking about in that circle, that yes, that one spoke of the wheel may have been covered. You know, let's, you know, we're doing sports and then we become uh, a pro sport, person or we, you know, go into uh, coaching sports like so many of our listeners or we run a gym or a martial arts academy or a cheerleading gym um, uh-huh. or we become a sportscaster. All these things have been done and they're they're great paths, but the one that you chose was not done yet. And uh-huh. so it's just so neat to be like, you know, one of the things we really can gather from from your experience is that there are other ways to go with our passions and to allow those things to come to fruition from from looking at what's been done, but also really listening to your heart and exposing them to what's in the toy stores, what's around, you know, what are the needs that need to be filled that haven't been done? I just think it's it's a really interesting way of of looking at life. Mm-hmm. And and when my oldest was going to college, he's a very creative person. Um, I remember my husband uh, is an a, he was an accountant undergrad and and he's a lawyer. So he he thinks very like you know everything is really black and white to him. Mm-hmm. You know when it comes to certain things, and that's how his mind works. But when our oldest went to college, my husband's like he really needs to major in business. I'm like, honey, this kid will fail. 
if we force him to major in business, right? Because he's super creative. Mm. And so my husband agreed with me and he graduated from college and now he is in a super creative, you know, media advertising field and he is loving it. Mm. So, you know, it's like, yeah, he has great business sense, but if you were to put him in a in an accounting class and a, a finance class, I mean, he would have been like falling asleep like this is just I can't do this. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. um, you know, we allowed him to you know, major in what he wanted to. Um, and he, he has done so, so well, and he's, you know, enjoying the profession he's in. Yeah, yeah. I think that it's, you know, it's interesting that, you know, to go along the line and, and look at the highs and the lows. And I know that, you know, when we're looking at our children, but also ourselves, there have been times when people have just flat out said no to us. Mm -hmm. And, and the no can feel, it can feel like just the largest wall put in front of us and, and really like a, just a big stop sign. I know that you have, have really been exposed to the big no in your path. And so I'd love to hear about when you've been faced with a big no, and if you we're standing in front of a child right now who had a passion, a goal that they were going after. And so let's say they tr- were trying out for a team and they got a big no. What's to stop them from turning around and just giving up or mm-hmm. trying to blast through, climb over, or get around the wall? Right, right. You know, there are, there are, different kinds of no's, right? There's a no, not right now, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a flat out, no, this is never going to happen. And I think a lot of times when a child faces rejection, it's never, ever easy. And it's incredibly tough on a parent to see your child with, you know, uh, faces rejection. Um, I always told my kids when one door closed, another one opens, but you have to open it, you know, whether it's, you know what, Hey, you did not make the tennis team. We're going to, we're going to, you know, if you want, we're, you can get, let's practice a little bit more. Right. Or maybe, okay. So maybe try out for softball. Maybe tennis isn't the route you want to take. Let's see how, you know, another sport goes or another activity, forensics or you know the 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 math team whatever it may be whatever your interest may be but we always have to allow them to and encourage them to open that door Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. have you felt like there was a point in your journey that somebody said absolutely not like this is not going to work and then you had a moment where you were like maybe this isn't going to work and i should stop Oh, gosh, there were so many times that I thought I, I, I you know, the, the, the amount of no's. OK, so if I can go back just a little bit, mm-hmm. like just when I launched the dolls, I, I had a um, it was at the U.S. Open in mm-hmm. New York. So mm-hmm. the Tennis Association, USTA. And five hundred dolls sold out in six days. Mm-hmm. So I knew I knew I had a uh, a good product because mm-hmm. I had a good test. And my next goal was to launch it at Toy Fair in in New York, which is the biggest toy fair in the world. And that's in February. And I did that in two thousand and nine. And I went in pretty confident thinking, you know, I've got the next best thing and, you know, I have a booth there and I had so many buyers come up to my booth and they said to me, I love your product. Mm. It's a fantastic product. My daughter plays soccer. She would love soccer doll. And I'd say, how many would you like to buy? And they all, you know, gave me the hand like, stop. They said, no, no, Hmm. we're not going to buy it. Hmm it'll never sell. And I said, why? And I, they said, because it's not fashion. Girls like fashion. Can you create a fashion doll? Mm. 
And I'm like, that's my point, mm. right? There are a thousand fashion dolls out there and I'm positive girls like more than fashion. Mm. And, and at that point, I also realized that mainstream ideas never create change and I was creating change. Mm. So it literally took me five years, five years mm. before I got a, I mean, I made enough money to, you know, keep the business going, but it literally, I did not take a salary for five years mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. was hard. It was hard, but it, what kept me going was, so I, I saw the positive, right? So whenever I thought I would throw in the towel, you know, I, I had like a, an amazing group of friends and family. Like I, I call it my team. As I look back, I, I, you know, everybody should have a team, um, you know, that you help each other out. And, you know, people just kind of taking my shoulders and saying, you have to keep moving forward because mm -hmm. girls need this. Girls need to see this. And I'd also like when I thought I'd throw in the towel, I'd, for instance, I'd get a call from the Today Show wanting to do a feature mm -hmm. or I'd, I, I would get a call from, you know, the Oppenheim saying, you know, I won one of the top awards in the toy industry, mm -hmm. you know, so there were all these positives that showed that I had a pulse on what our culture wanted, but the buyers were my gatekeepers, mm. which, made it, which made it very difficult. So I, I, that's how I, you know, I kept going. I didn't, I never felt that I was being unrealistic, right? So there, there, you never want to encourage that, you know, if, if, if it's, if it's truly not going to work out there, there, you have to know when to stop, mm. right? Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I continued to see all these positive signs and I'm like, how can I give up? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. how can I stop? Mm -hmm. So what an important lesson that when you are faced with the frustration of the no or a failure to keep your eye out for signs of positivity mm -hmm. and that people are looking for what you're doing and just to keep focusing on those. So often when we get a negative, you know, response or a no, it becomes so all encompassing. It becomes mm -hmm. the only thing we hear or think about. Uh, and, and, and that's just a, a, a life situation. But when we can focus on why we're doing it, the positives, the team, you know, the messages, the good things that have happened, we actually can hear and see the signs that mm -hmm. We, we've got to keep going. We've got mm -hmm. to. Yeah, persevere. Persevere. Persistence. Yes. Yeah, I, I did a TED Talk, and I the, the title of it was Persistence, the Power to Create Change. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I do believe that, you know, persistence above all is, you know, what, what does create change. Mm -hmm. Right. And that persistence comes from something internal, but it also comes from recognizing that what you are persistent about is needed, mm -hmm. is wanted. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you mentioned just now when you were talking was that you were setting goals. And I just want to live there for a moment because, sure. you know, when, when we're, talking to kids or helping kids with their passion, it can't just be sort of hairy, carry, whatever, you know, let's just try this and does it stick to the wall? Mm -hmm. Goals are said to be best achieved if they're planned out um, in, in a very, uh, you know, specific way. Uh, a lot of people talk about the acronym SMART, which means specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. For you, if we break that down, uh, you were very specific about what you wanted to do. You wanted to design a doll that looked like real kids doing real activities like soccer or gymnastics and other sports, uh, clearly measurable because you measure it based on units sold, right? Like how many dolls are created and sold. But I'd love to focus for a moment on the A. And for kids, when I'm presenting on goal setting and grit, I say that the A instead of attainable stands for agreed upon because they really need to get some good support. They need to ask for help to achieve their goals, like given that they need people to drive them, they need people to teach them, they need people to tutor them, purchase things for them, you know, mentor them. So can you talk about how you reached out for help 
you know, on your path. Obviously, you're not a one woman show, you know. So can you talk a little bit about how you reached out for help when you, you know, with your team, when you were trying to follow your passion and reach your goal and then provide advice for young people or their parents about how someone might go about getting the help that they need when they can't go it alone. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, when you said ask questions, uh, that is so huge. Mm. I can't even tell you. Mm. I, I, I just feel that you cannot do anything alone. Mm. And you have to ask questions and ask as many questions as possible. So I had a, an experience when I was younger that stopped me from asking questions. Mm, mm. And it was a, a very, um, uh, again, a learning time, but it lasted way too long. Uh, I had, um, a, a, when I went into junior high, I, uh, I, you know, I thought I was super, you know, you know, strong, smart, and adventurous, right? I always say that because when I was in grade school, I was, you know, I, I felt super, you know, confident. And then um, that all was shattered when I was in uh, junior high. And I actually had a multiple teachers, and unfortunately, they were male. When I asked a question, if they didn't like what I asked, they referred to me as the dumb blonde. Oh, so painful. It was yes. so painful. Yes. So I, I mean, I remember sitting in class and my classmates laughing mm-hmm. and I, I'm like, wait a minute. Why does my hair color have anything to do with I, what I just asked? Mm-hmm. And maybe it wasn't a good question, but you don't say that. And it's hard when all your peers are laughing, uh, you know, and the teachers are giving permission to those kids mm, to mm. call you a dumb blonde or any girl who has blonde hair a dumb blonde if they think you know they said something uh that warrants that you know that term and so um you know it was interesting because just the, the, the you know maybe that time in my life um i chose not to tell my parents my sister or any of my friends because i was super embarrassed Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. but it did do one thing. It shut me up mm-hmm. for four years in high school. I chose not to ask any questions. I sat in the middle of, to the back of the room. Um, I did not want any attention, good or bad. And I chose to sit on the sidelines mm-hmm. and, um, you know, I still, you know, did well in sports, but I literally didn't do the best I could do. And it frustrated my parents, but, you know, they're like, where's our, you know, our, you know, our go-getter, you know, Mm -hmm. where's our kid who was so, you know, fiery Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. and I, it just, you know, it, 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 I just chose to sit on the sidelines. Now that, that I, I kind of woke up when I was in college and I, you know, I was like, whoa, what have I been doing? You know, Mm -hmm. I don't want to sit on the sidelines. So that's when I realized I'm going to continue to ask questions. And if anybody tells me it's not a good question, I'm going to challenge them and say, you know, that's, that's, that's not very nice. Or why do you think that's not a good question? You know, did I miss something? You know, I apologize if I missed something. Um, But could you explain again? Or as I moved on and into my career in um, with the go, go sports girls, I asked questions if I didn't know how, to do something. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how to do any of it. Trust me. I didn't know anything about the toy industry when I had this idea, nothing about manufacturing, nothing about designing. So I had a lot of questions to ask. And I felt like I don't care if anybody that laughs at me, if anybody says this is a crazy idea, I, I'm going to continue to move forward. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. and I did. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of times that I also think, as well as asking questions, having an open mind. Um, Because I knew I had a good idea, but when I spoke to people, sometimes their ideas were better than mine. Mm, mm. And so just building upon that. Mm -hmm, mm, mm. Really reaching out to other people and asking questions to the right people, um, being able to filter uh, their their ideas and, and really consider them, being open to them to say, 
you know, would this work? Does Is this in line with what I'm trying to achieve? And not going in with such a stubborn attitude that your way was going to be the only way or the best way and that these people who were more established or more, um, maybe they have been in the industry for much longer, that they could have ideas that could really work for mm-hmm. your for your passion. Right, right, right. And then if somebody didn't know how to do something, I would always ask, well, do you know anybody else I could ask? Mm, that's great. You know, you know, just continuing to ask. Right, right. So important. I think that's great. A great lesson for our kids, our kids who want to be entrepreneurs, our kids who um, are trying to make some changes in their schools or in their communities to, to tell them It's okay to ask questions. In fact, it's required. How many questions have you asked about this? Who have you asked them to? And if you get a I don't know or a no, who's the next person you can talk to? And even ask the person that you've been talking to at that point who they can connect you with next so that Mm -hmm. you can get the answers that they don't have that you clearly need. Right, exactly. I always viewed it as like a big puzzle, Mm. right? And I was determined to find that next puzzle piece. Mm. Oh, I love that. So the one of the last pieces of goal setting is having it be timely. It's it's making sure you have a timeline. And you say in your presentation that you had a very natural goal setting stopping point, that you were preparing for something very real that happened for a very specific time when you were like, this is my last go. Like, this is what I'm preparing for. This is mm-hmm. what we're going to do. So how did you use that time-bound p- pinnacle where you were going to show off those dolls as your driving force to get it done? And what advice would you have for our young people on making sure that this timely piece is in place so that time doesn't get away from them and they aren't sort of aiming for the elusive someday that isn't in line with real perseverance. Are, are you talking about when I went to Toy Fair that yeah, last time? Yeah, that sort of right? last time yes. you were really preparing and gearing for, up for, mm-hmm. you know, this real try. But because if you didn't have that, I feel like, you know, you, the perseverance sort of lacks when you don't have an ending point And it sort of just goes, oh, someday I'll get to it. You had like a real stopping point you were driving towards something so how did that fuel your perseverance and getting it done and then what advice do you have for our young people to make sure that they have that time bound piece in place right right so you know that that time bound piece it was like a um it happened very naturally i did not have like a you know, a lot of times people ask me like, oh, did you have this marketing plan? I'm like, well, yes and no, right? I started with one and then it completely changed, mm. right? Every every six months or every every three months, it completely changed. And it was so hard to keep up with a like a physical written one. And it was, mm. <laughs> so anyway, it got very, you know, sloppy. But I had to put, I I just, you know, I just knew I had to put a hard stop on this if it wasn't going to happen. Mm. And and that was my last, uh, you know, uh, push at Toy Fair. So basically it was after 500 no's in five years, (laughs) right? And that, you know, my husband and I had this heart to heart talk and we just said, you know, I just, I mean, I had three small kids at the time. Right. So, I mean, I never saw it as like, like hard, hard work, but I, I, I would get up at, you know, three o'clock in the morning and talk to China, mm. <laughs> you know, my factory, but then I'd go right back to bed. Um, but, you know, there were certain, I worked on crazy hours, but, you know, and, and not making a whole lot of money. And so, you know, my husband and I, I told him, I said, listen, I'll give Toy Fair one more shot. And, if nothing happens, I will throw in the towel, uh, which just broke my heart because I knew girls deserve more, but I had to be realistic. And, you know, I just, I, I thought, well, maybe our culture isn't ready for this. So mm-hmm. I didn't want to believe that. Um, and that's when I had the opportunity to pitch to three Walmart buyers. I literally 
like I said before, had five minutes. I took advantage of this opportunity. And when the buyer said yes, you know, they said, this is a winner. And I mean, I was jumping up and down. I was hugging them. I mean, they had <laughs> no idea I was about to throw in the towel. I mean, but that's what really got the ball rolling. And I'm so happy that I took advantage of that small opportunity when so many people, so many people, I can't even tell you, said, don't do it. Mm. Don't do it. Mm. It's amazing to me. It makes me think of that one cartoon where that guy is like hacking away at the wall and, um, you know, with a pick and mm -hmm. he's packing away and hacking away and like right at the end of that, like there's this like teeny pit of wall left and and on the other side is like all the diamonds or whatever. And and he turns away and goes the opposite direction. And it's like that, just that one last ditch effort can, right. can break open the wall and and get you to exactly what you've been looking for, seeking and hoping to achieve. Um, and, and that's what you did. Like it's... It's amazing to me and that you did take that opportunity after somebody, you know, so many people said no and, and people were discouraging you from, from taking that actual opportunity. Mm -hmm. So that was the sort of life changer for you um, to present to Walmart. And then what ensued right after that? Well, right after that, well, uh, of course, well, I have an author of the, of the books. Uh, she was writing a um she had written one book and mm -hmm. I hadn't been able to move forward on it. So just because I didn't have the finances, but she was in Minnesota and she's wonderful. And uh, so I call her immediately. I'm like, Oh my gosh, Kara, you have to start writing, you know, for five more books. I, I had a new, basically, uh, you know, fear challenge ahead of me. Now I had to become a publisher. I had to hire an editor and an illustrator, which I did. Um, it took about a year to do all this. And then um, we packaged them together and called them the Go Go Sports Girl Read and Plays. And uh, they hit Walmart shelves in 2015. Um, that was a success. And then, you know, I was invited to the White House twice in 2016. And then uh, my business was acquired and uh, in 2016 by Jazzwares. And we are getting ready to launch the new redesigned product uh, this year. So I'm really excited about it. Mm, it's amazing to me and such a great path, but really a good learning opportunity for any of the girls and boys that are listening and, and their parents and, and coaches that when you get stuck um, and when you know when you have a passion and you get stuck that you can keep going you can ask more questions you can get more help um, you can try one more time there's always these other paths and even when people keep saying no and you you feel like you're you're slipping and you're not getting anywhere that all you really need is one person to say yes Mm -hmm. And your whole life can change. But that yes comes from exactly what you said, that you have to be the one who opens that door. Nobody mm -hmm. else can do that for you. When right. one door closes, another door opens, but you have to be the one who opens that door. I think that is brilliant. And I will really take that um, advice. And I feel like those who are listening, I hope you repeat that to others because we cannot just wait for others to do the work for us. It won't happen that way. It happens when we commit, when we have our grit and we have our passion and our perseverance in line and we just keep plugging away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And a lot of hard work. Yes. I always, you know, it, it, you know, the whole, uh, you know, when my kids were younger, if they were, if they had an excuse or if they, if I saw laziness, you know, it just bugged me to death. Sure. I, you know, it's like, I don't want an excuse. I want to see hard work, kindness, honesty, Ooh, move yeah. forward. You know, that's what's going to make you successful in life. I feel the same way. And I say the same thing. So you and I are on the same path with that one. Mm -hmm. So give me your top tip. What is your top tip for parents, coaches, educators who are working with kids, uh, who are trying to achieve a goal um, and, and, and experiencing frustration and failure? What is your top tip for them? 
Um, you know what, when, when you were saying that, you know, I, I like the ending of my TED talk, if I could say that, yes, please. Uh, because I, I, I worked hard on that. And it, so it, it, I say, you know, my big moment started under ordinary circumstances. And what I have found is that you don't need a big team. You know, you don't need to have a huge resource. You don't need to be overly talented to create change. What you need is to take your best idea, step over fear, find courage, find your passion, and persist when things get difficult. Mm, mm, absolutely, absolutely. It's really reaching down into your depths and and saying to yourself, we're, we're, we're going to go for this. We're going right. to do this no matter what's in our way. Mm -hmm. And also, I one one of the biggest things that you know I have uh, found in, in parenting, which has been difficult but beneficial, is allowing your children to fail. Mm -hmm. Right, and that it is such an important lesson, um, and it it creates hardworking people. Right, because you know nobody likes to fail, but we all have to experience it, and we learn from it. So I made a pact with myself when I started my business, because I, I knew I was going to fail. I knew I was going to make mistakes, and I looked at it as a lesson learned. I looked at it as a detour in the road. I never saw it as a roadblock. Mm -hmm. mm. I just was down in Florida speaking, and um one of my best friends was speaking as well and she talks a lot about achieving in at high levels and and the brain and how how it really works when we are trying to achieve something at high levels and she says that the people who are at the peak performance the people who really do well in life are people who go into a goal knowing that there, it is not going to be a straight line from the get go to where you're going. That each time that we do something is just simply an attempt that we can cross off our list if it fails, and then we move on to the next attempt. That it is not any anything that says anything about us. It just is like what wrong method. Try something else, and if mm -hmm. we keep that in mind that there's going to be these peaks and valleys and it's going to just be a mess on the way to success that that is really when we can achieve something those are the high level performers because mm -hmm. they don't say i failed something's wrong with me they mm -hmm. say i failed something is wrong with that method let me try mm -hmm. something else Mm -hmm. And that's what I really hear you saying. So um, it's it, just knowing you're going to fail and then picking up and trying something else is is really an important top tip. Yeah, very much. Very okay. much so. So what is your resource of the week? Where can people go to get more information about you or the Go-Go Sports Dolls or the books? Where can they go? Well, they can go to my website, which is uh, jodybondynorgard.com. Um, the Go Go Sports Girl website is under construction because we're going to launch a new one, mm -hmm. but they are currently on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, but look for the uh, uh, a, a big announcement in the next couple months on uh, the relaunch of the Go Go Sports Girls. There, we're 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 gonna make it big. Mm, so excited for you, and I'm sure oh, you will. You. Yes, of course. Uh, so those that those resources will be on the show notes for this podcast. So anybody who's driving or somewhere where they're unable to uh, write anything down, don't worry. Um, Jody, I just want to thank you for coming onto the show today and talking about your journey and how it really informs how others can help counsel young people on their journeys to success. I really appreciated what you said, especially about that one door closes, another one opens, but you have to be the one who opens it because I really think that is such a good depiction of what grit and perseverance is all about. So thank you so much for all of your insights today. 
Well, thank you, Robin. Great, great to talk to you as always. Well, I really appreciate it. And everybody, I've got my takeaways and sweet friends, I know you have yours. Let's discuss them. Come up on Facebook, go to the Dr. Robin Silverman page, or let's chat about it at Dr. Robin Silverman or twitter.com slash Dr. Robin. I'm also on Instagram at Dr. Robin Silverman. And we'll be going back and forth with Jody on uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, sharing memes and talking about this episode. So join us. You know the meme that I'll put, be putting up there on closing doors and open doors because I love that statement. And if you love this podcast like I did, I hope you'll go up to iTunes and rate and review it so others can learn about these outstanding solutions and use them in their own homes. I truly appreciate it. That's all the time we have for today, my fellow parents, leaders, and educators. Thank you so much for tuning in to How to Talk to Kids About Anything. For more information on books, articles, speaking engagements, or curriculum, please visit drrobinsilverman.com. So many great podcasts up there. Show notes to this podcast will be up there as well. I look forward to weathering the storms and enjoying the sunny side of life together. And please remember, even on the days when you fall short, You've got this. You're here. You're getting the information you need. I know it's not easy, but never forget there is always tomorrow. Parenting is the ultimate do over. I see you. I'm right there with you. And as there are moments when we doubt our know how, our choices, and our sweet sanity, please know you are 10 times the parent you think you are. Until next time, this is Dr. Robin Silverman with How to Talk to Kids About Anything. Please tune in again and keep connecting through conversation. See you next week. You've been listening to How to Talk to Kids About Anything with Dr. Robin Silverman. For more information on books, articles, speaking engagements, or curriculum, please visit drrobinsilverman.com.